Hey, fourth graders. So we've moved on to our, into our next unit, and we are still talking about multiplication. Remember, in the last unit, I told you multiplication is really the biggest topic that you're learning in fourth grade math this year. And so we want to make sure that we really cover it in depth, and that's why it's broken up into two units with so many lessons. So this video today is going to be all about using double digit times double digit numbers, and we're going to be using our estimation and mental math strategies. So same strategies from the last unit, but we're going to look at it with double digit times double digit numbers and the cool thing is in the next two videos we're going to again be looking at the same exact strategies we did in the last unit but we're going to be doing it with double digit times double digit numbers it's a little different but it's not that much different so get ready you guys have got this this video is going to go with the first four lessons in your math unit for this for this unit so this is lessons one two three and four that we're looking at all right, so let's start about out looking at how to multiply um, with multiples of 10. Remember, that's numbers that end in zeros. So in the last unit, we looked at something like this, where we had 30 times 4, and we said, okay, well, we can take the 3 times 4, and we know that that equals 12, and then we can add on the 0. Or we, if we have 300 times 4, we again look at 3 times 4, that equals 12, and this time we have two zeros, so we add on the two zeros. Well, it's the same thing when we're looking at double digit numbers times double digit numbers. If I have 30 times 40, all right, double digit times double digit, I'm still looking at, they both end in zero, and I'm looking at the beginning part of the numbers. Three times four equals 12. This time I have to count the zeros in both of my factors. That's these two numbers I'm multiplying together. I have to count the zeros in both factors to get the product, okay? So I have one zero here and I have one zero here, two zeros, and I add on two zeros at the end. Let's look at one more example of that. Let's say I have 70 times 80. I know seven times eight equals 56. Again, I have one, two zeros, so I add on two zeros. All right. It's a pretty easy concept. You're just counting your zeros and adding on all the zeros from all of the factors. That's the numbers you're multiplying together at the end. And we could even do this. Like I'm just going to show you one really quick example. This is not something you do in fourth grade, but if I have 3000 times 5,000, um, all right. If I'm doing 3000 times 5,000, it's the same thing. 3 times 5 equals 15, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I just go in and I put in my commas, and I get 15 million. All right? So you can use this strategy. It's a great strategy, and you can really go out and impress your friends and be like, hey, I can multiply 3,000 times 5,000 in my head. Right? So that's always fun to do, too. All right, so let's look at our next thing that we're, we're talking about. Now we're going to look at how we can use this, what we're doing here, to round to get an estimate. All right, so we're rounding to get an estimate. Now, in the most part, we're going to be rounding to the nearest tens place because we're doing double digit numbers times double digit numbers. So let's say I have 36 times 42. All right, I'm going to round both of these numbers to the nearest 10. Well, 36 would round to 40 and 42 would round to 40. All right, well, now this is easy to estimate because 4 times 4 I know is 16, and I have two zeros, so I add the two zeros on at the end. All right, and that's using rounding to estimate. We've talked a lot about rounding, all right, when we're doing it with multiplication, we're just rounding to the nearest tens, and we add in our zeros after we've multiplied the front end of the number. There's another way that we can look at rounding, and this is using compatible numbers, because there are some numbers that are actually pretty easy to multiply by in your head. 25s, for example, you may be like, Mom, this is long. I don't know my 25 times tables. You know how to count quarters? Because quarters are 25 cents, right? So if you have a pile of quarters, I bet you know how to count to see how much money you have. Because you go 25, 50, 75, 100, right? You know that, 25, 50, 75, 100. Well, if you just want to keep going, it's 125, 150, 175, 200, right? It's that same pattern, that 25, 50, 75, 100, over and over again. So multiplying by 25 is really easy because you can count that in your head really easily. So let's say I have... Um, 27 times 32. 27 times 32. Well, I 27, I could round to 30, 
but I could also round it to 25. And 25 is a little bit closer than 30. So I could round this to 25, and I could round 32 to 30. And then I'm doing 25 times 3, 25, 50, 75. And then I add on my zero at the end, 750, about, right? We're estimating, so this is about how much. 750 would be a little bit closer to the actual answer than if I were to do 30 times 30, okay? So just kind of another another way to look at that. Um, so another one that would be a good compatible number is 15s. 15s are pretty easy to count by because you're counting up by a group of 10 and then a group of 5 group of 10, group of 5, so you can do that pretty easily in your head most of the time. All right, so that might be another one where you would want to use the compatible number versus the rounded number. All right, and then another thing that we can look at when we are um, multiplying, if we might need to, sometimes we might need to like see a visual image of what we're doing. And if you're thinking about this, we if you remember back to when we were doing place values and we were representing like, you know, um, let's say 13, we would represent with you know, a 10 stick and three ones cubes, right? Well, if I'm doing 13 times, let's say, um, three, I would do this 10 stick, I would do that three times, right? I have three groups of 13, okay? So I have 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, okay? So that would be kind of one way to represent that. But an easier way for us to represent that is going to be in what's called an area model. And we talked about area models in the last um, unit. So this is something that you've seen where we're drawing a box. Okay, so let's say I have 13 times 30. Okay, well, you should know right away. Well, I just have to add a zero. It's 390, right? But what we could do is we could draw this area model, all right, where we have our tens. And our ones. So we're going to split this into 10 plus 3, and we're going to keep this as 30. All right. And then I know 10 times 30 is 300, and 30 times 3, well, 3 times 3 is 9. And then I add my 0, and I add those together, and I get 390. So again, because this is kind of a quick way to represent it, this would be considered another mental math strategy. You can visualize this in your head. It's just breaking the number up into smaller pieces to multiply it by. So I'm writing it all out. I know it says mental math, but I'm writing it all out so that you can see my thinking. However, you don't have to write it all out. You can do this all in your head. And you're basically doing the exact same thing in each strategy. All right. So again, when we're multiplying, just to wrap it up, when we're multiplying, we're using mental math strategies and we are estimating or we're finding out about how much. There's a few different ways that we can do that. We can do it by just straight up rounding. And remember, we multiply the front end of the numbers together and then add those zeros on. We can work with compatible numbers if, if that is something that is would be working for that problem. So usually 15 and 25 are our compatible numbers that we're looking for. Um, or we can go ahead, this is actually finding the actual answer, but we can go ahead and represent it, you know, in an area model where we're breaking the number up into its place values and multiplying the place values together. Okay, so those are just a few different of the mental math strategies. Again, this goes for the first four units. Um, if you need any additional help, please reach out to your math teacher and have a great day, guys. We'll see you in the next video.